Hello and welcome to another Worldwide Camera Exchange video. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Leica M6. Um, first of all I'll run through the various versions available. Uh, if you're looking around you'll come across quite a few different variants and I'll, um, I'll run through the main ones for you. Then I will spend more time looking at the areas that you need to really focus on if you're buying a second-hand camera. The newest M6 you're going to find is going to be 20 years old. The oldest is going to be nearer 40 years old. So unless you're very, very careful, you can end up buying, well, frankly, a bit of a dog. Um, yes, they're extremely reliable. Yes, they're extremely well made, but you still want to buy a camera that's been well looked after. And I'll give you four areas to focus on when you're, when you're checking out cameras on the, on the market. Okay, so first of all, the variants. Here we have a Leica M6. This is a chrome one, they're also made in, in black. There are, there are early and late models. The cameras in the initial run were made in the Wetzlar factory in Germany, and those are marked the lights, L-E-I-T-Z. Later cameras were made in the new factory in Solms, and they're marked uh, Leica, L-E-I-C-A. Um, fundamentally the same. They, the, the Leica version, the later version, does have an updated meter. So if you're working outside the EV range of the meter, the little LED in the viewfinder warn, warns you that you're outside the EV range of the meter. So, for example, if you're, if you're working in a coal mine and you've got the camera set to a thousandth of a second on F22, you'll be way outside the EV range of the meter. So you'll hold it up, you'll press the button, and the little, little, the little LED will just flash to tell you. Um, not a major thing. Some people like it, some people aren't bothered. Um, the later cameras were launched with three different viewfinders. This camera is the standard 0.72 viewfinder, and that's the viewfinder that most people will prefer and that you're most likely to come across. There was also a 0.85 viewfinder. Now the 0.85 viewfinder is, is, is closer to the Leica M3 viewfinder, so it's less wide angle, it's slightly more telephoto. The advantage with that is that if you're using telephoto lenses, for example, 75, 90, or 135, those frames are large when, when you look through. So, because the viewfinder magnifies slightly more. But the, the downside with the 0.85 viewfinder is you lose the 28 mil frame. So if you're gonna be using a 28 mil frame, then the, eight, the, the 0.85 is no good whatsoever. If you're using telephoto lenses, then maybe have a look at the point. 85 if you can find one. There's also a 0.58 viewfinder, which is which is which is the, the, the flip size, the 0.85 viewfinder. The, the 0.58 viewfinder is more wide angle, so it diminishes more. So when you when you look through, the, the, you, you can see the 28mm finder more clearly and the 35mm finder more clearly. But the downside is you lose the 135 frame. Um, so really, it's, it's down to personal choice. If, 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 if wide angle photography is your thing and you use the 28 a lot, then perhaps look at the 0.58. If telephoto work is your thing, then look at the 0.85. But for most people, the 0.72 is really the one to go for. Now, there are lots of limited edition cameras. I'm not even gonna, gonna go there. There's the, the Sultan of Brunei M6, there's the Platinum M6, the Titanium M6. Lots and lots of limited edition cameras. They're expensive, they're extremely expensive, and I really wouldn't recommend them. If you want a camera to use, just stick to the standard M6 in black or in chrome and, and choose the viewfinder that, that suits your needs best. Now, you found a camera online or you found a camera in a dealer somewhere and you want to make sure it's a, it's a, it's a decent camera. What are the things you need to look at? Well, there are four, four main areas to focus on. Cosmetics, mechanics, optics, and electronics. So, first of all, the condition. Look, 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 look at the top plate. Look around the corners. Are there any dings, any marks? Look around the strap lugs, any marks there? You'll always find a few little marks. That's completely normal, absolutely normal. What you don't want are excessive dings, excessive bangs. You don't want it to look as though it's been abused. Check out, check out the rewind crank here. The, the rewind crank on these cameras is actually very vulnerable. And if you knock it, 
one half or the other half of the semicircle can sort of knock, twist down. And you'll see at that point there that it's not aligned. That's a sign it's had a knock. Also, look at the um, look at the wind-on crank and, and, and make sure that the wind-on crank is parallel to the top plate. Often you see wear marks there. That's not necessarily a problem, but just, just, just make sure that it's not being caused because the wind-on crank has been knocked and the whole wind-on assembly is, is, is just angled down. Again, that could cause problems in the future if the, if the wind-on mechanism has, has, has had a knock. Then just check out the base. Look at the, the condition and the, the sort of cosmetics of the base. Look at the corners. Are there any dings again? Any marks there? This one has a tiny little ding just, just there. Won't affect performance in the slightest, but it does affect the value. So don't, exp don't pay too much if it's got a mark like that. Um, drop the base plate off. Have a look inside. Just how much brassing is there? How much brassing is there? Just check out the shutter. I mean, a lot of this is really common sense stuff. But it's just worth spending the time just to make sure there are no na real nasties that might surprise you later on because you haven't checked out the camera at the point of purchase. Um, look inside. Just look at the lens mount. Make sure it's not too brassy. You're going to get a bit of wear there. That's completely acceptable. You just don't want too much wear. Um, also, while, while you've got the body cap off, just, just check out this little wheel here. This little wheel operates the, um, the, the, the parallax correction and the, um, the rangefinder mechanism in the viewfinder. That should just pull back and spring back in a very healthy way. If it doesn't, then it's a sign the camera needs servicing. So once you've satisfied yourself that the camera is in nice cosmetic condition, once you're satisfied it hasn't been completely abused or knocked around, move on to, to just check out the mechanics. Now, first of all, I, I would always check the, the slow speeds. On any Leica M camera, it's the slow speeds that are always the first thing to go if it hasn't been used or it hasn't been serviced regularly. So stick it on one second, fire the shutter. Sounds okay, do it again. Still sounds okay, do it a third time still sounds okay. You can't tell it's exactly a second, but you can hear it's opening, you can hear it's closing, you can hear it's not jamming open, and you can hear it's not closing prematurely, so it's not going click click. You've, you've got roughly a second delay between the two clicks. Um, if they need servicing, often it'll either jam open or it'll go click click very quickly, which shows that the timing mechanism isn't engaging properly. Let move, move on to half a second. Do the same on half a second. Again, if it suddenly goes click click, you've got a problem, or if it jams open, you've got a problem. And then just slowly work your way up the, um, the speeds. Just listening and making sure that as you fire each speed, the sound is, is, is roughly consistent. Of course, you, you can't time it exactly, but if it, if it pass, passes this test, then you can be fairly confident the, the, the shutter is okay. Then move on to the, the top speed. On this camera, in fact, on all M cameras, it's one thousandth of a second. Um, Take the base plate off, take the body cap off. Remember to take the body cap off because you'll, um, you'll get this wrong if you don't. Hold the shutter open gently and just, just, just look through at a strong source of light. You can't time the thousandth of a second, obviously, but what you can do is see light coming through the shutter. Now it's a focal plane shutter, so basically you have two, two curtains. One opens, one follows afterwards. What can happen with M6s and all M cameras, if that is adjusted incorrectly, the second curtain crosses the film gate before the um, uh, prematurely, so before the, the first before the first sh uh, sh uh, sh shutter curtain has cleared the film gate. So what you have is the first blind opening followed very quickly by the second blind, but the second blind is coming across too quickly. So if you hold the thing up at the light, you'll only see light through maybe a third of the, um, of the film gate or maybe two thirds of the film gate. What you won't see is light across the whole film gate. So if you see that, if you see a, a, a sort of band of vertical darkness, then you've got a problem with the shutter and again the camera needs servicing. So just moving on with mechanics, have a look at, um, have a look at the frame counter here. This little lever brings in the various frames for the, um, for the lenses. So it brings in 28, 35, 50, uh, 75, 90, 135 frames. It should click in a very healthy way. And when, when you look through the camera, you should see those frames 
come in and out quite quickly. If they're sluggish, if they move in and out very, very slowly, then again, it's a sign the camera needs a service. And along with slow speeds, the frame selector is probably the second most likely thing to fail on a Leica M6. But as with this one, if it's nice and nice and sort of clicky and nice and positive, you're okay. The last thing you can check at this point is just check the frame counter. Um, as you've been firing away, just checking, checking it, the frame counter's obviously been, been moving forward. Just drop the base plate off. There's a little click, a very quiet little click, and it's reset. Just make sure that's reset to usually below zero. It's normally a couple of clicks below zero. If it's stuck on 24 or stuck on 36 or stuck on 21, then the mechanism's sticking and it, again, it needs servicing. So you, you, you've looked after, you've looked over the, 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 the cosmetics, you've looked over the condition, you've looked over the mechanics. Now it's just an idea to quickly check out the optics. Obviously the only, the only optical thing here is the viewfinder. Have a look into the viewfinder. Take a mobile phone torch, they're brilliant because the, the LED light lamp is so strong. Just shine it into the viewfinder and just make sure there's no misting, no brown stains across the, um, across the, um, across the frame. You can get coating faults in these cameras, quite rare with the newer M6s, but quite common with older Leica M2s and Leica M3s. And when you look through them, you'll see brown stains across the, um, across the glass. That's a real issue and very expensive to get fixed. Not, you're not likely to see it on the M6, as I say, but it's worth, worth, it's worth a look. A few little spots of dust, don't worry too much. Excessive dust or fungus or spidery fungus inside, that is a real issue. If you see fungus inside, don't go near it. That can be a real issue to get sorted out. Um, so that's the, the third thing. You've looked at the optics, you've checked the mechanics, you've looked at the cosmetics. The final thing is the electronics. Now, obviously with the M6, there isn't much in the way of electronics. It's a completely mechanical camera. Um, but the meter does rely on batteries. This, this is the little meter cover on the front on the M6. Just unscrew that, check out the contacts inside, make sure they're not, they're not corroded. Um, if, if one of these has been in storage for a long time, the battery may have corroded and, and, and damaged the, um, the contacts inside. If it is heavily corroded, I would, avoid, I would avoid it completely. If there's a little bit of corrosion, you can probably clean it quite easily. But make sure it's clean, put a battery in and just, and, 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 and just check the metering is coming on and lighting as you would expect. It's worthwhile just comparing to another meter. Uh, but if you're going to compare it to say a Nikon D5 or a Minolta handheld meter or a Sirconic meter, don't expect it to read the same as those meters. They, none of these things read exactly. They're all calibrated to a different degree of calibration, plus, plus or minus a third of a stop is completely normal. They also see different things. So never expect two meters to read exactly the same. They just don't. But you'd expect it to be within a half a stop, within a stop. If it's much more than that, then you have probably got an issue. So once you get to that point, you can be fairly sure that you've got a good, reliable camera. You, 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 you've checked out the condition. It hasn't been abused. That's a big, big, big tick. You've checked out the, um, the mechanics. They were working fine, big tick. You've checked out the optics, big tick. You've checked out the electronics, big tick. Might be worthwhile just running a film through. A lot of people do like to do that, but it's worth bearing in mind that a film in isolation won't, sh won't highlight some of these issues. If you've got fungus in a viewfinder or you've got a sticky frame selector, you won't spot it if you're running a film or two or three films through the camera. So if you're gonna run films through, fantastic, but do do, do do those checks as well because film doesn't highlight everything. So there you have it. I hope, I hope, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions or any comments, please just pop them in the box below um, and keep an eye open for any future videos. Um, thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Thank you, bye bye.